welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back with Claire Lopez, the Vice President for Research at the Center for Security Policy, the renowned expert on everything Middle East and especially Iran. Welcome back, Claire. Thank you very much, Barry. We are talking today about events in Iran and Baghdad originally a couple days ago with the death of General Soleimani at the hands of a drone strike and what happened with the downing of a jet uh, by the Iranians. It now looks to be intentional, although Iran says, yeah, they might have shot down the jet, but maybe it was by accident. They've walked back the story of a couple days ago that it was mechanical failure, but the world knows it. Iran hasn't admitted it. What should be the world response? Well, I think the first response is going to, going to come from the, the air flight industry um, in each country around the world that may yet be flying, uh, have been flying into Tehran. I think there's no question that planes will be, um, they will not be flying into Tehran uh, for the near future, uh, any kind of planes. And, and these will be national uh, you know, nation state decisions at, at, the, at the government level, uh, as well as the authorities of, you know, the in, international air um, industry, uh, they will simply halt flights uh, into Iran. This will have very serious consequences. You know, as we were saying uh, just before, uh, financial consequences, certainly, but also additional consequences in terms of isolating that criminal um, Tehran regime. Well, that regime also controls another country. Um, for all intents and purposes, Iraq has become a client state of the radicals in Tehran. And we've just learned in the last few days that the Iraqi parliament has voted to expel all American troops, supposedly their allies, from the country, to give up the billions in bases that have been built, and to leave sooner rather than later, while they were chanting in the parliament, Allah Akbar. Not a good sign for the United States' presence in Iraq. How should we respond to that? Well, a couple of things first to note. Um, the, the, the members of that parliament in Baghdad um, included that day of the vote only uh, Shiite members antagonistic to the United States. The, the Sunni members of parliament were not there and did not vote. Um, number two, that vote was a kind of a sense of the, of the parliament, a resolution that is not binding. Uh, according to international agreement, and specifically the status of forces agreement between uh, Baghdad and the United States, only the prime minister of Iraq uh, can make that decision to uh, basically abrogate the status of forces agreement. Uh, the, that prime minister, um, uh, al-Mahdi, um, is in an interesting position because he actually resigned his position, but then kind of stayed on as a caretaker. So it's not even certain he has the authority to abrogate that agreement. So it's all rather murky right now, but there's nothing immediate. There's nothing binding, and the United States and President Trump specifically uh, have said that we are not leaving Iraq anytime soon. Well, while, that, while that's happened this past week, uh, President Trump has announced massive new sanctions. I'm not sure how much more <laughs> can be done sanction-wise against Iran. Um, will it have any stronger effect than everything we've done to strangle their exports, imports, and uh, trading in dollars around the world with the International Bank of Settlements? No, I don't think so. But I do think the shoot down of this Ukrainian plane will do that. That, that is something that, that supersedes, I think, even the sanctions um, in, in, in the level of response that that, that that is getting from around the world. Well, that's interesting because, you know, I was watching the news earlier today before we came on air and trying to figure out if I was President Trump and I had a country that has declared war on my country, well, on a regular basis, at least once a week, twice a week since 1979, 
uh, has exported revolution around the world with the express intent, as you said, of establishing a worldwide caliphate, and we're killing my soldiers, I'd be wondering what I could or should do. Now, as you said, um, maybe the world has changed with the downing of the jetliner. Maybe with the red flag flying, there's going to be more retribution coming against the United States for the killing of the number two guy, the lead terrorist, General Soleimani. Worldwide, um, there's reports out of uh, various intelligence agencies now, Claire, that Iran is testing mobile missile launchers that can be uh, launching medium to long range missiles off boats um, that could be positioned in various places to hit Europe, Israel, and eventually the United States. Obviously, they quit the JCPOA, they're enriching uranium, they're developing long-range missiles, and they're making no secret about it. What should we do now? And when I say we, I mean the United States under President Trump, because I've all but given up on the EU. Well, you know, President Trump uh, gave um, a, uh, a remarkable speech. He basically offered the Iranian regime kind of an off-ramp, saying, "Well, they're 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 standing down, um, and um, so we will too." Now, this is before the full impact of the um, the Boeing passenger liner uh, ha has really hit um, uh, the, the consciousness of of all of us. Um, I think that it is a mistake to give the impression to the Iranian regime that we will back off of pressure, especially at a time when number one, we've decapitated you know, their, uh, their overseas expeditionary uh, terror export organization, the Quds Force. The successor to Soleimani, who's been named Ismail Ghani, he's a pale, pale reflection of Soleimani himself. Number two, at a time when the removal of Soleimani from any lineup in, in the Iranian regime uh, I think, throws that regime into a fair amount of chaos uh, in terms of succession, in terms of what if the mullahs fell, Vilay de Fahri system, clerical theological system falls. But then Suleimani had been, I think, positioned to be a potential successor. Military, yes, not clerical, to uh, the, the clerical rulership of, of, of Iran. He's no longer there. I think that uh, maybe throws uh, the ranks of the IRGC, the Quds Force, the Siege Intelligence Service, into a fair amount of chaos. These are all good things from our perspective. Um, but we really are, are, are in a place now we've never been in. I think we need to wait uh, and see what the next days will bring. But again, bottom line here, that red flag still flies. That means they're not done with vengeance as long as that flag remains on top of, of the Jan Karan Mosque. Well, making a prediction, I would say, based on what you said, and, and my research is not different than yours as far as reaching a conclusion, that were there to be another aggressive military movement by Iran, the American response will be swift, severe and much worse than a drone blowing up one car at the Baghdad airport. Um, specifically, Trump said there are uh, many dozens of targets that have been identified. They've got military plans for all of them. I know a number of senators have been briefed on what those responses will be. And if Iran wants a major conflict with the United States, they ought to launch something because the response will be ginormous compared to what we've done thus far. Would you agree? I do agree. And I think uh, that among those 52 targets that uh, President Trump referred to, by the way, that's the number of American diplomat hostages the Iranian regime held after storming our embassy back in 1979. Among those 52, certainly um, our nuclear sites, are missile sites and probably sites belonging to uh, the IRGC, uh, Quds Force, Besiege, and Mil uh, Ministry of Intelligence and Security. You know, what I would add to that, 
uh, for viewers that don't know, um, the Iranian centrifuges that are in the biggest uh, enrichment facilities, especially at the Fordo site, are in a mountain well underground. Uh, conventional missiles uh, and ordnance supposedly would not penetrate deep enough to destroy those facilities. Um, the United States possesses several bombs. Uh, there's a Moab, mother of all bombs. There's the, um, uh, the deep penetrating bombs that are called bunker busters. Uh, they are extremely heavy weapons that can only be carried by certain kinds of aircraft. For example, the Israelis do not have aircraft nor the long enough runways to get into the air with a bomb that heavy. But in the last few days, B-52s, which carry those bombs, and B-1 bombers have been repositioned uh, to our air base at Diego Garcia, uh, a short flight from Iran, as if to say, we've moved the ordnance and we've moved the delivery systems. Those are standoff platforms. In other words, they can fire that weaponry and be out of range of anything Iran can put into the air, either missiles or aircraft, and bring destruction. Do you think the president might use them, or is it simply a what if and a threat? Uh, very good points, Barry. I, I think those were very visible, direct threats to the Iranian regime. Do not even think about it or else. We have the planes, we have the ordinance to take down that regime completely. Not just its nuclear weapons program or its missile bases, take the regime down. If they are so foolish um, as to try another a kinetic attack against Americans, American troops, American citizens, or American facilities in the region. Well, we're on pins and needles watching daily. As you said, the red flag of revenge is still flying. The public threats coming out of Tehran are vociferous and continual. We will see whether Trump's repositioning of American weaponry is enough to wake up Iran to say, we don't want to go down in flames. We want to live to rule and fight another day. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. A special thanks to today's honored guest, our Middle East expert on everything Iran, Claire Lopez. Remember, text the word TRUTH to 88202 so you can be signed up to be on our mailing list. You get all of our videos like this one for free on your phone. We never charge. All you have to do is send us a text message to 88202, the word TRUTH, and we will sign you up for free. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.